Hello there, USU listener. I am so excited, as always, so grateful to be in your earbuds, to be a part of your greater inner discovery and journey to being your USU. And I just, I'm so thrilled that you're going to join me in this conversation today. This is with such a dear and amazing and badass woman who um, I will tell you all about and how we met. Um, but just sit back, let us let just enjoy, and as as always, there will be show notes, and uh, I think you're going to find so much, so much wisdom, so much heart in this conversation. So thrilled to be here with you. Welcome, welcome. Today we are going to get to connect with Elise Archer. Elise is the founder of the Superhuman Selling, and she sells movements, which empower entrepreneurs and sales professionals to revolutionize how they sell, explode their income. Hello, who does not want that? And achieve quantum leaps in all areas of life. A Salesforce top influencer and a thought leader whose insights have been featured in major media, including Forbes and Inc., Elise is passionate about empowering her clients to sell in a way that leverages their natural gifts and helps them build wealth along the way. She is an international keynote speaker and host of She Sells Radio, where she shares best practices from female entrepreneurs and sales professionals who have accomplished extraordinary goals. I'm so grateful. I was recently on this show and had the best time with Elise, so I know you're going to love her. Outside of She Sells, Elise is also a founding team member of Brand Builders Group, a personal branding strategy firm. Her client list includes New York Times bestselling authors, top 100 podcast hosts, and eight-figure entrepreneurs, as well as leaders who are earlier in their journey and committed to scaling their influence, their impact, and their income. Also, Prior to founding She Sells, Elise served as a partner in an eight-figure international sales coaching organization where she helped sales professionals achieve their goals. This is like her genius. So I am so excited to have Elise on today. Of course, you can learn more about Elise at EliseArcher.com. We will have all of that in the show notes. Elise, I have to tell you also, by the way, my friends, Elise is a mama. And a new mom of a two little baby, two boys, one little guy and one really little guy. And <laughs> Elise, I am so grateful you're here today. This is such a gift for me. And I know my entire community, everyone. Okay. Wow. Thank you so much for having me. I, I think this is probably, and I've done a lot of podcast interviews. The first one where, and this just shows your heart, Julie, the first one where the host has said, you want to set an intention before we record? <laughs> And so I, I don't know if your listeners know, maybe they do know that you always set an intention before you record, but um, yeah. just the the pureness of your heart and your desire to give and be of service and to create a space where I could like be part of that energy today is really, really powerful and beautiful. And so I'm so excited and grateful to be here. And um, I'm excited to see what unfolds from our conversation too. I know, I know it'll be juicy and good. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Thank you. Yes. Always setting intentions. And we had such a beautiful one. And what's so amazing to me, and I just want to share with everyone because we have such a neat story. Elise and I, we met probably, God, about six years ago, I would say, mm -hmm. maybe even more, which is nuts. We we met through through two fantastic thought leaders in the space of personal growth, um, Hal Elrod, Miracle Morning, John Berghoff, together had this amazing mastermind, Quantum Leap. We did that and met. And I remember, I actually remember before going to one of the dinners, we were like meeting up beforehand outside. It was this beautiful retreat, uh, gorgeous place in Austin. And I remember just being blown away by your energy, by mm -hmm. your heart, your kindness. Like it just, there was such a grace about you. And I was like, who is that? Like there was just mm -hmm. literally, I was like zoned in. I'm like, this woman is so full of heart and high vibes. And we, I remember connecting and I, and I just watching you and your journey has been really incredible. And, mm -hmm. uh, I, you know, it's one of the gifts of, of having others around you that are up to big things that want to make a bigger impact. And I remember that was like a big investment in myself at that time. Yeah. And I thought like I just started my business and I'm like, 
what the hell am I doing? <laughs> oh, had you just, oh, cause you, you had just written your book or it was like in the process of coming out too, yeah. I think right yeah. around then. Yeah. yeah it'd be like I a year and a half earlier, I started wow. my business. It was super early oh, on. Oh my gosh. Yeah. yeah. I remember feeling the same way, um, about the mastermind, about the investment, about you. And it just like, I, you know, you meet people and, um, and you just kind of know, you know, you just kind of know. It's funny. I've been using, I'm, I'm just going to like riff here for a second. If you oh, yeah, don't mind. Riff it out, girl. <laughs> totally. Totally. So, I love it. Um, one of the apps that I don't do a whole ton with astrology. I'm actually like very interested in it and I want to go deeper into it, but it's not like my whole realm of genius, but I've been using an app for a while now that I really love. And one of the things it's been saying recently is like, just really pay attention to who seems to get you and who seems to understand you at a deep soul level. And I feel like you are one of those people. Mm -hmm. And, and I feel like you have that gift. Um, I, I feel like that's an intuitive gift of yours, but I feel that from you. Like I feel that just mm -hmm. openness and connection. And I felt like I felt that since we met, um, many, many years ago and drummed in a forest together and did all the things through that mastermind. So <laughs> it's good to be back. <laughs> My gosh, I forgot about the drumming in the forest. You just reminded me. I was like, oh my God. Yeah, there was like a lot of really amazing, interesting aspects to that whole thing. <laughs> and it was so, I was still so in like, I think I had just recently got out of corporate, maybe. I'm yeah. trying to think of like, it was around that time. So for me, all that was like really out there. It was like, this is a little weird. Like, wait, I thought this was something about like growing our businesses and yeah. and expanding, expanding our influence. And why are we drumming in a circle? Like me now, I'd be like, oh yeah, this is like a Tuesday. Like this is very normal. This feels right. <laughs> but back then it felt very out there, but it was so fun. Like it's good to stretch and get out of your comfort zone in those yeah. ways. So lots of, lots of good memories from that. I love it. I'm just getting this this great flashback of like literally the silence. We were like in the midst of these like huge, I don't even know, like geodes, like huge, huge st stone. I, stones are not the right word. I mean, there were just rocks that were like incredibly huge and sitting yeah. there. <laughs> yeah. Reflecting. It was awesome. It was so fun. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, you know, I think what would be interesting and actually one of the things I do remember I think we talked about also connecting. We connected on a lot of levels and I know mm -hmm. just around self love and kind of, you know, some of your journey, I remember mirrored a little bit of what I had experienced around these areas of self love, around taking care of yourself, around, mm -hmm. you know, if I'm remembering correctly years before, you know, how you, you know, body image and things in that realm. And I just, before we even get to like corporate, leaving corporate, starting your own business, what you're doing, I think it'd be great for people to get a sense of you because you're somebody who has a lot of wisdom and has mm -hmm. really learned, I believe, and really grown and grown in compassion is my interpretation. What were some of those challenges for you, Elise? And how do you think they've helped kind of play into and help support you as you've grown as an entrepreneur? Mm, wow. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, which challenge do we start with? <laughs> I mean, I think <laughs> it, it all kind of comes back to self-love and self-worth, yeah. right? So it, so at its core, I think most of my challenges and probably most of our challenges collectively are perhaps centered around that. Um, but yeah, I mean, from a body image standpoint, I, so I grew up a child of the eighties and I remember I always loved like beauty and fashion and makeup. And I actually wanted to be a makeup artist for a long time. I think still, if I had another life, like I might go do that. Um, just, I, I love, like, I love the transformation process. I love helping people see themselves in a different way. Um, I love helping people like feel really beautiful and feel really empowered, which I think has actually translated in a different way in the work I do now. But I think that it contributed to some of the things that I ended up having as challenges because growing up in the 80s, like the ideal for beauty was very much like remember the 80s supermodels and no offense <laughs> against them, but like, I didn't look like that. Um, and there wasn't the body positivity movement. Um, there was a very singular way of looking beautiful. And I remember just, I think there was a lot of factors going on at the time. Um, 
you know, I had a younger sister who is a I mean, beautiful, dear friend of mine to this day. She was always naturally a little bit skinnier than me. So there was some of the comparison and dance class kind of thing going on. Um, and I, I just, I remember like, I, and I was never like the pretty girl in class. Like I was probably cute, but I was never like the pretty girl or the popular girl in high school. And, um, I, I just really remember, um, not liking myself, like first not liking how I looked, not feeling like I looked the way that I wanted to in order to feel beautiful, loved, accepted, et cetera. Um, and then that kind of translated into like at a deeper level, not accepting myself and not loving myself. And so um, it went on to manifest as actually like a 17 year eating disorder that I developed when I was in my early teens. Um, a lot of control issues, try, there was some like tension and just stuff going on in our home growing up that I, you probably get, it's like, you're a very intuitive woman. I didn't know I was intuitive at the time, but I was. And so, um, I ended up internalizing a lot of that and kind of trying to control what I could control, which was went into what went into my mouth and my weight, weight loss journey and all of that. Um, and so, yeah, I found myself in my, I would say mid to late twenties, like I'd along the way, I'd kind of like gone down the path of pursuing corporate success and pursuing career success. And so I found myself in my mid to late twenties, um, you know, having created the life that I thought was going to make me happy and fulfilled. And on the outside, like I was making decent money. I was usually top of the leaderboard, if not close to it in terms of sales for my corporate role, had a nice house, had a nice car, all of the things. Um, and yet inwardly I was struggling so much still, you know, had the eating disorder. I hadn't been telling anybody about, there was a lot of shame and guilt associated with that. Of like, why can't I just get over this? Um, was in a marriage that was really unhealthy. Uh, I was just an energetic match for him. I didn't know that at the time, but it, that was, it was a very unhealthy, um, marriage, uh, had a lot of lack and scarcity mindset issues going on around money. And so, um, yeah, I, I found myself in a not very pleasant place and I had pride in an ego that was like, I have to make it look like I have it all together on the outside in order to be safe in the world. And so that was, uh, I think that's some of what contributed to the work that I do today and to how I work with clients. Um, but it's been a bit of a journey of like unraveling that since then and figuring out mm. who I really am, what success really is falling back in love with myself. I mean, it's still a process to this day. Like it's, I still, it's something I work on every single day. Um, but that has been, yeah, that's, that's been part of the journey and some of the challenges that, uh, that I think contributed to where I am now. Mm. I, I thank you for sharing, for sharing that at least I, and I, it's funny, I had remembered, I was like, Oh, I didn't realize it was a 17 year eating mm -hmm. disorder or that, You'd been married before. I was like, oh gosh, we share a lot, even more mm -hmm. in common than I so much. remembered. So much. So much. Um, I am curious, mm -hmm. what was the impetus? What had you start to both realize something is not working here and what helped you in your healing? Mm, sure. So it was interesting because growing up, um, both of my parents are like some of the most intellectually brilliant people I've ever met. Like both Ivy league grads, very smart, very analytical, like left brain. Um, and that it was like academics was really not, I, I didn't grow up in a household where it was like, if you get a bad grade, you're in trouble type of thing. Like they were both, um, they didn't force me to go down any sort of path, which I'm very grateful for. Um, but academics was promoted heavily. Being smart was promoted heavily personal development wasn't really anything that I was exposed to. And so um, there was a time in my life, I think what actually opened me up to it was I remember I was in outside sales in my mid twenties and I did a lot of driving to go visit accounts and I would drive sometimes for a couple hours at a time. And there was, I don't know if you've ever been in a place where like, there's so much going on in your life that is not good but you don't want to think about it. And so I didn't, if I sat alone with my thoughts for too long, it got too hard. 
And mm. so I, I discovered podcasts during that time because I thought I need something to listen to aside from, I think I was also into like a lot of gangster rap. So it was like gangster rap and, and personal development podcasts, but I discovered, awesome. I discovered podcasts, which led me on the personal development trail. And it kind of opened me up to this whole different world of weight. Like it doesn't have to be like this. I can actually change my reality by shifting who I am. Like I don't, I don't have to be in this kind of self-imposed prison that I've created for myself. Mm -hmm. And so that really opened, it, it started the journey and looking back, I could see like, gosh, it was such a blessing that I was searching for something to drown out my thoughts. Um, but then I, I think I, I started to open up to it then. And then 28 has always been a special number for me. Like it's, it's, I was born on the 28th. I see 28s all the time. It's just a special number. And it was right before I was about to turn 28, was still in the marriage, still struggling with so many things. And I was just like, you know what? I get one go round in this life, at least of having a 28th year. I don't want it to be the same as the other ones have been. And um, it's terrifying to think about starting to unravel some of these things that I've created in my life, the marriage, the, um, the career that wasn't feeling aligned. There was a lot of not great stuff going on at work, um, harassment, all sorts of things. Um, and it felt terrifying to leave because I felt like I would suddenly be naked alone, like starting over fresh. But I thought it's, it is more painful to stay here than to see what's on the other side of starting to actually listen to the voice that's telling me something has to change. And mm. so, um, yeah. So I think fueled with the little bit of personal development I had at that time. And then just the kind of the decision of like, it's, I am willing to see, I'm willing to experience the pain of unraveling this to be open to what's on the other side. I started to make some pretty quick and profound changes in my life. And within about six months, I had left marriage, left the corporate job. I had didn't have much of a run runway. I had one client who had paid me 300 bucks to help him with something in his sales. And I was like, I can make money outside of corporate. Let's go. <laughs> but it was kind of like a leap and the net will appear type of moment. And um, mm. six months to the day I left. No, I'm sorry. Six months to the day of my 28th birthday, I had left the marriage, was out at a networking event, um, not looking to meet anyone. It was only six months prior. And I started talking to this guy named Jason and I knew within five minutes that like I, I was going to get married to him. Like I just knew he was my person. Um, and that has been a really incredible journey. Um, business has spawned and become something really beautiful from that as well. So we can go wherever you want to go with that, Julie. But yeah, that's, mm -hmm. that's some of what started it. There is a lot in there and I, whoo, I'm like, I've chills and I, and I want to say just for our listeners, because, you know, it's, e it's easy to see, you know, read your bio and see what you're up to today and feel like, oh, sh you know, A, you're stunning on the inside and out. Mm -hmm. You have these, this beautiful family, successful, wonderful, heart-centered, thriving business. And I think it's important for, for everyone, for people to hear, actually, this has been quite a journey and what I'm hearing is you really dug into a type of courage um, mm. that was that was like discovering a part of yourself you may not even have known was there, mm. Mm -hmm. and trusting, trusting. I hear trusting your intuition, yeah. really taking that big, big leap. And you know, it sounds to me, at least, like you know. It, your heart really spoke and you chose in this instant to listen. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and that has been, it's funny because it's the underlying message of the She Sells brand now is trust yourself mm -hmm. because, yep. which you would think, what does that have to do with sales? I think it actually has everything to do with sales and money and yeah. career success. Um, but because for so much of my life, I didn't. And I think yeah. that's why when I look back at like the eating disorder and getting into a marriage that I actually kind of knew I was not aligned. <laughs> and it was like, I didn't know how to listen to the voice. I didn't know how to trust. I didn't trust myself. And so mm -hmm. I had a ton of mind body disconnection, some trauma, like sexual trauma there as well. So I was completely disconnected from my body, from my intuition for so long, but 
I have yet, and I, you might say the same. I'd be curious to hear your answer. I have yet to take an action based on trusting myself and have it not work out for me. 100%. And they're usually the things that feel like, oh, crap. Like, this is a terrible, like, analytically, this is a terrible move. This doesn't make any sense to quit my job with $300 to my name or to, like, I've done more quote unquote crazy things since then. But it's always been listen to the inner knowing, listen to the inner knowing. It, it always, always, always works out. Mm. I think this is so crucial. I, I, we will come back because I want to talk about how it's so a part of what you do with sales and she sells mm. that movement. And, you know, I'm like, oh, another way we are completely aligned is this honoring and trusting your intuition. And, you know, what you were saying about it really is your guiding light today. It is what guides you in everything. And I just can, I can concur. Nothing. The only, the, the times when it, things have not, and it doesn't mean it's not hard or challenging or there's not, it's not a, sure. it can be tough, but what you were saying, the times I found to be really, really like, oh, that did not, that did not work out has been when I went against it. <sighs> Every single time. Every, yeah. I did, if, if I can just say really quick, like, I think it was last night. I'm taking a, it's probably TMI for a podcast. Sorry. I'm taking a no. lot of baths lately because it's like the only place I can get away by myself. Like at the end of the day and the morning routine with a two month old at home is not what it used to be. So it's like, okay, at <laughs> night I can like get a little bit of time to myself. It's little window. Yeah. 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 So yeah. La last night I was in the bath and I was just looking back, I was journaling and looking back at my life experiences and the times when the times that were most abundant, most joyful, most um, like free flowing, where I felt like I was receiving the most versus the times that felt like the biggest struggle and like lack and scarcity and self. And it was every single time it was, mm. oh my gosh, like the times where I was receiving the most, the times that were the most joyful were the times where I trusted myself, mm. where I took big bold actions that were often involved with that, where like it made no logical sense to do what I was doing. <laughs> um, but I, I did it because I listened to my intuition, where I was in flow, where I was receiving, where I was taking good care of myself. Like those were the times that were always the best. And to your point, it doesn't mean there wasn't some refining process along the way of trusting yourself and taking the the action, but it's it's like this this experience almost of being held where it's like, not only do you have to trust yourself when you follow your intuition, you also kind of, you trust the universe. You trust that there's something bigger than you. Um, at least for me, that's how I do it. And, and it, it always pans out. It always does. Mm. This is so interesting. And I actually am so glad you brought this up. It's something I wanted to go back to. You had talked about earlier on really struggling with this scarcity mindset, this mm. kind of lack mindset and, it's so fascinating because I, I've just watching what you're doing. One of the things I love about you and the way you talk about sales and receiving. I mean, I, I was like shocked. I'm like, oh my gosh, you have such a abundant mindset today. You have such a, mm. you know, your prosperity consciousness seems just like clearly something has shifted big time. Yeah. And maybe walk us through what has helped you because I know people listening, especially those of my sisters and the brothers. And mm -hmm. everyone who's here mm -hmm. who have businesses, coaches, creatives, healers, some kind of business, even on the side, even though, even, even if it's a, a corporate job, there, there is often that aspect of, oh gosh, the money piece, like yeah. asking people, you know, for what you're worth in your salary or your, your rates, your offerings, mm -hmm. believing you deserve it. And, and I, I see, and I know there's often this wall that we can hit that's like, Eh. And so I know this would be helpful just to hear how did, how have you shifted your, I'm going to call it prosperity consciousness. How have you done mm. that? Yeah. It's like, it's one of my favorite things to talk about um, because it's one of the areas that I struggled the most. And I think like our biggest challenges are the things we're meant to teach others once we figure our way out through them. Yeah. And so, yeah. So my, I'll share just a little bit of context of like my journey with money and prosperity and prosperity isn't just money. Like I don't think abundance or prosperity is just money, but I'll speak specifically to money here. Cause it is a very big part of it. It's a big part of our lives for all of us. 
Um, I actually, I grew up upper middle class, so it's not like I grew up in lack perceptively. And yet there was, um, an kind of an undercurrent growing up of like, like I remember my mom would clip coupons every Sunday. There would be shame around shopping. Like we would have to hide things from my dad if we went shopping above a certain level. And so what I didn't realize at the time, and this is, I'll share some things about my backstory. Like it's, it's zero disrespect to my parents. They are beautiful. They're um, beautiful souls. I think, especially as a parent now myself, I'm like, oh, there's, there's stuff I know I'm passing on to my kids that oh, no, with more consciousness later, I'll probably say, oh, I wish I'd done it differently. But I, I firmly believe our parents were always doing the best they could with what they had. And um, yeah. I, I had some contrast and some things demonstrated growing up that I think embedded some scarcity mindset um, unintentionally on my parents' part. And frankly, it's probably epigenetic. It's been passed down generationally. Anyway, that's a, another podcast for another day. <laughs> um, but so, so there was kind of this conditioning growing up of like, you have money, but you don't, you have money, but uh, there, you should feel guilty about spending it or you got to be careful and do things perfectly in case more doesn't come in or in case we're not okay. And, and so there was this undercurrent of, um, of kind of lack and fear and a little bit of anxiety around money. And so I didn't understand how it all tied together for a really long time. But I, again, I found myself in my corporate job. And then even later as an entrepreneur for, for quite a while, like making decent money, making low six figure. And I'll use numbers here just for context. Like I would, I would yeah. always make about a hundred, a little more sometimes, but about, that was like my financial set point. I didn't know I had one, but I would always make that. And yet I was in constant fear about it going away. I was stressed. I was anxious. I felt um, nervous on sales calls. because I put a lot of pressure on like, this has to come in or else. So I kind of made money God in many ways. Mm. And <clears throat> um, I finally reached a point. I mean, this was. Hello, friend. I just wanted to take a quick moment to share something really amazing with you. I've recently launched a wonderful membership community for conscious coaches, and I think you're going to love it. It doesn't matter what kind of coach you are, whether you focus on life, spirituality, art, business, health, wealth, wellness, or anything else. This community is designed to support you in building your business from an intuitively guided place and while helping you attract the perfect clients to make a bigger impact. I also want to say that we are going to be meeting bi-weekly with me, yours truly, and I'll be leading and guiding you through some of the most important practices that I've used over the years to manifest success and to raise my vibration. We'll also explore some powerful healing tools and strategies that I call woo tools, which really are about helping you to tap into the wisdom of oneness. If you heard my recent episode, then you know what I mean. You can check it all out at julieriesler.com slash inner circle. This is a big hearted community where we are going to dive deep into how to be magnetic and manifest the abundance and clients that you want authentically. We'll also be bringing in experts and authors to help you develop your mindset, your branding, and tap into your heart intelligence and greater wisdom. If you're interested, you can check out the community at julieriesler.com slash inner circle. We would love to have you join us. Namaste not even that long ago now, like less than three years ago, where I was like, there's got to be a different way to live. There's got to be a different way. Cause I had that consciousness led me to creating a life that was good, but not great. Um, it led me to kind of obsession about money without realizing that my thoughts were just on constant repeat about not enough, not enough, not enough fear, anxiety, et cetera. And so um, I really just made this commitment about, like I said, like about three years ago now that I'm going to do whatever it takes to start to shift this. I was reading Bronnie Ware's top five regrets of the dying at the time. And it was kind of just, um, it just opened up my mind of like, am I really going to spend my life in this small little bubble of lack, limitation, like life being good, but not great. Um, and I made this decision that kind of, I feel it ties in a little bit with the theme of your work and what you do. Um, I made this decision 
right before my 35th birthday of like, I want to experience the fullness of who I am. I want to experience the fullness of who I am. There were so many parts of myself that I had shut off, forgotten about, left behind just in this pursuit of money and success that never seemed like it was enough. And so when I made that commitment and that decision, um, I started being guided to do some things that felt very petrifying when it came to money. <laughs> I felt guided to hire um, a mentor and a coach who was, it cost $50,000 to work with her for six months. And that was half of what I made the year before. And I was like, I don't have that money. I had it, been saving it up. Um, and, but I felt so guided to do it. And I knew that actually in the process of making that investment in myself, that it was going to be a demonstration that I was worth it. I was worth receiving that level of support because I felt very guided towards it and that I would have to become a different woman to even afford the payment <laughs> to pay back the, what I was going to put on my credit card for this. So like for <laughs> laughing now, I'm like, gosh, as a coach, that's a really ideal client. I was almost like, I don't care what this woman teaches me. I just need the very essence of <laughs> investing in myself at this level and figuring out how to pay for it. Like, I know I'm going to transform. <laughs> but so I, I was forced to confront all of my money fears and all of my limiting beliefs around abundance and worthiness. And that's when I got really, really deep into quantum physics and a lot of Joe Dispenza's work and um, really studying energy, vibration, quantum physics, neuroscience at a much deeper level started doing the inner work with such an intensity because my family's, it was like my family's survival was almost on the line. I was the breadwinner. I had to figure out a way to like make this work financially or else I didn't know what was going to happen. Um, and, but I, I started like, I, I started working on generating abundance from inside. I learned mm -hmm. that I, that we generate abundance from inside. And if we're seeking it from outside, which we often do in the sales or business world, like when I make this amount of money, then I'll feel validated. Then I'll feel worthy. I call that selling from lack versus selling from wholeness. Um, when we're selling from lack, when we think I'll feel good when this happens, it's never enough. And if you hit it, you'll just move the needle farther. Um, I'm not to say I'm not about setting big goals and going for them. I think it's beautiful, but it all depends on the energy you're doing it in. <clears throat> but I, I didn't have this term for it, but it's what I call it now. It's this concept of selling from wholeness is like you do the inner work to actually feel so good and so whole and so worthy and so abundant in just who you are without any, nothing to do with your outer world. And when I started doing that work in three weeks, of really intensely doing that work and having made that investment in myself, I started to feel very different. Suddenly it was like the anxiety, the fear, the lack feeling started going away, even though nothing had shifted yet in my outer world. In six weeks, I went from having hundred thousand dollar years to hundred thousand dollar months. And the whole experience of sales and business and frankly, life was radically different. I experienced flow like I've never felt. I experienced receiving like I'd never felt, but it all stemmed from the energy shift. And it all actually stemmed from, I felt whole. I felt whole before I received more. And so I know you probably know this and could unpack this in so many ways from your work and for what you do for your clients, but that was, um, I don't even remember the question. I hope it answered it. <laughs> I just went on a tangent oh, there. <laughs> gorgeous. Gor I'm like <laughs> writing and writing and writing. Everyone that probably, those who look at show notes, I've, I, I, I'm writing down ferociously because I think what, <laughs> I feel what you're saying at a very deep level. What a, mm. what a powerful journey and story, Elise, because I, I think many, many can relate to like just the growing up, you know, it just with these beliefs, like what I, what I wrote down as you were speaking is it just, there's this instability. It didn't feel stable. Yeah. It did yeah. not feel whole. Right. So this yes. idea of wholeness. And then of course, with not loving yourself as much, and then, you know, I really got what you're saying. And I, I, I have felt this and been there when selling or coming from lack, you can set the goal, you can reach it, but it's like, the, the, the carrot dangling in front of you never stops. It continue. It's, it's mm -hmm. the worst hamster cycle, um, mm. to be on. And it sounds like, you know, and I, I, goodness, do I believe this with 
finding somebody to mentor and coach you. Um, it sounds like you took a massive quantum leap of courage to hire. I mean, I had a little like, woo, yeah, that's, <laughs> that is definitely, I have done things similarly. Um, mm -hmm. Not exactly that, but similar. And I, I it, there's something about what you said. I internally started to shift who I was yeah. to, because it was such a big investment, but also saying to yourself, I'm worthy of this. Yes. And what I'm hearing, and I just, God, do I believe this to my core, is it, it's all about what, what I really heard you saying. It's, it's who you are being on the inside. It is your alignment and your energy that you are connecting with in yourself and that it all stems from there. In fact, everything on the outside is reflecting the inside. So you didn't see it yet, but three weeks in, you said you started to feel different. Six weeks later, and that's a short time, you are now, you you changed your whole paradigm, 100K a year to 100K a month. I mean, that's, that's really powerful. Also, curious what you think of this. I know I think we're similar in our depth of loving spiritual yeah. tools and connections, whether it's all kinds of works, you know, I, I go on and list them, but I'm curious for you, um, you know, were there any books or maybe share for a minute, some of the resources in addition to the, the coach that you worked with mm. that have helped, that helped you. You said, I know Dr. Yeah. Joe Dispenza, who I love. Um, yes. What else? Yeah, absolutely. Oh my gosh, so much. <clears throat> um, so I'll give just shout outs to like everyone and everything that helped me. So the coach who I hired, Kayla Craft, uh, mommy millionaire. So she's, she's great. Very, uh, like direct, hard hitting, like I didn't even know about inner child work and that changed my life. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so shout out to her, my girlfriend, um, Allison Chavez, she helped me so much through the process too. She's got a beautiful, um, beautiful work around prosperity. And then I would say Joe Dispenza and Bob Proctor, like their work, I dug so deep yep. into it as well. Um, I think those were the majority. Yeah. 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 I think that was, that was it. It was like a kind of combined force. And I, I will say the biggest thing in all of it is like, no matter who you work with, no matter what you do, like I, I think always follow your intuition, follow the nudges yeah. of who feels aligned and what resources feel aligned. But I was reflecting on this last night. It was like, there has to be a firm decision. There has to be a firm committed decision that this is changing. Otherwise it doesn't matter. You can invest all the money in the world. You can read all the books. If you haven't decided that this mm. is changing, it's not going to change you're going to dance around it and you're going to get a wishy-washy result. You're going to be like, Oh, that coach didn't work. Oh, that book didn't work. Oh, it's, it's all in you. It has to, it is the power of decision every single time. Yeah. Oh, I, yeah. That is such a great way to say it. I'm, I'm even thinking with some of the great books like think and grow rich and some of the other fantastic resources. I know, I think you're also into Abraham Hicks and other yes. yeah. resources like that. It's like, Here's the thing, because what I'm hearing you say, and I, I, I just, I so, so, so believe this as well. You know, we have free will mm. and we constantly get to decide. So whether you're making that decision or not, you are deciding. And so what I really am hearing you say is you finally said enough, like this, um, it's not working. <laughs> yeah. what, what I'm doing, and it wasn't terrible. And that's the thing I think for those listening it doesn't have to be terrible to realize, I mean, hopefully it's not, it just doesn't feel, you said it was good, but it wasn't great. You didn't feel yes. expressed fully. And I think if I can just say really quick there, Julie, like, I think that's the most dangerous place we can be is yeah. it's not terrible. Yes. Because if it's terrible, you're going to change. Like if it's terrible, we, we only put up with so much of that before we're like, no, this has got to, this has got to stop. But the place where it's like, life is good. But if I were to, like, if this was actually going to be my last week, my last day, my last month, would I be excited about what I did with my life? Would mm. I feel like I had lived to not the fullest potential from an achieving standpoint, some of that, but yeah. have I lived the fullness of my, what was possible for me in this life? 
And mm. I think if we get really real <clears throat> and some of what I love that you shared on my podcast is like sitting with yourself with those hard questions and asking yourself, you know, did I like asking, you said you gave a wonderful question of like, what do I know to be true that I'm not saying something? I think something mm. along those lines. I love that you've got such powerful coaching questions. So, um, asking yourself that and asking yourself, like, am I living my most fully expressed life? And if I was going to die next week, gosh, like, would I, how would I feel about all of this? And yeah. then that's a very clarifying question because to me, I looked at my life and I was like, I haven't done a fraction of the things that I like that actually light my heart on fire that I said I want to do growing up. And I've given my power. I've, I said, I was almost like waiting for permission from somebody else. I don't know who this somebody else was, but to say like, it's your time, you can go for it. I kept saying someday, I, uh, one of my clients I was just talking to, she reminded me of this phrase I'd said a while back of like putting your life on layaway. I've, I've kind of forgotten about that, but it was like, I was putting my life on layaway and saying it'll happen someday. And I was like, you know what? It's not going to happen someday. Like if I'm honest with myself, no one's going to come give me permission. No one's going to come tell me it's time. No one's yeah. going to come tell me I'm worthy of what I want. I'm the only one who can do that for me. And that's when everything changed in a big way. Yeah. Ah, so gorgeous. I love, I love what you said that you were, you're putting your life on layaway. And I think this is very important. The other thing that just stuck out to me is that danger zone, which we can yeah. overlook when things are, they're okay. They're fine. That there's a different, I mean, feel the energy in your body when you say they're fine, they're okay. It's like, mm -hmm. that's not really living like I'm plugged into source here. Like that yeah. is, and, and, and I've seen it with you. I have to say mirroring back, at least like I, I mean, it really actually seemed like things were great before. <laughs> and <laughs> now it's like, wow, she is like lit up. Like you mm. are pouring, you know, light and energy out of you. And I, I do think going back to energy, we we can tune in and know right away. Are you feeling awake, alive, lit up, empowered? Yeah. Kind of. If it's kind of, don't judge it. But like what you said, you really got like, no, I'm not even living a fraction of what I'm here to do yeah. and be. Yeah. It's so Powerful. true. It's so true. Yeah. And I think like, if nothing else, if someone is listening and they're like, yeah, you know, I'm being honest, I'm, I'm there. Um yeah like not making yourself wrong for it. Cause it's so easy to go into, at least my pattern was, Oh gosh, I should be doing this differently or I should be doing better. Oh my gosh. I can't believe I did this. Like going into guilt and shame, not that. Yeah. Um, but just like really being open to, um, I had a train of thought and I just lost it. It's going gonna, it's gonna to come back, but like, oh, it, okay. So if someone is listening and feeling that, like just, acknowledging it, getting curious. And then looking at like, what could like, what it, I always, I look at it this way. Now your desires are green lights. So mm. whatever the desire is, that's kind of like persistent in the back of your mind, in the back of your soul, like trusting that it kind of, it comes full circle, Julie, to the trusting yourself, trusting mm. that you following that, whether it manifests for you the way you think it will, or something else, the person you become in the process is going to yep. be someone who you may not recognize. She's she or he is already inside of you. Um, but you will fall so much more deeply in love with yourself in the process of saying, I am worthy of pursuing this. I am worthy of receiving this. And then allowing yourself to become that version of you to allow that version of you out who has that end result you're looking for. That's the actual prize. It really is. Mm. Everything, your outer world will shift and you'll, it'll be, beautiful and good and all of the things you'll have a very different experience in your outer world, but falling back in love with yourself in a deeper way. Cause you said, yes, cause you trusted yourself. Cause you said, I'm worthy of this. Um, that to me, like, that's the real prize at the end of the day. That's gorgeous. I love how you just said that. I, I really I also love this reminder. Your desires are green lights. It's a great way to say that. And, um, you know, on a, on a spiritual level, I, I, can just feel this with you. There's something also about, and I can feel this in your experience is there's something about feeling that greater potentiality, something more that's always been stirring in you that is now starting to express itself. And it's like, Oh, wow. Impact is greater. I know we talked about it early on. 
you know, it's a lot of what you do, right? Is helping women around sales, greater impact, greater mm-hmm. income too, but greater, you know, their message, their work, their worth in the world. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to just for a few moments, I'm like, how did we get to this timing? I'm like, this is, <laughs> I've talked to you for years. We're going to have to do round two. I feel but the same. <laughs> I do want to just maybe just briefly, the concept of sales for mm-hmm. many, um, and I'm just picturing my beautiful listener right now with me who <laughs> I know for me, like I, I actually came through the back door. I was, I think we had joked, I joked with you. I wasn't trained in this, but if you have a product, a service or something you love and you are entrepreneurial or have any kind of opportunity to, to help people and sell, you're in sales. Mm-hmm. And maybe just for those that have kind of a less than love loving relationship, <laughs> One of the things I do love is your way, you know, first of all, trusting yourself is, is so important with, with sales, but with the, she sales, like maybe just share what, what is so important to you to, to get across for those that mm. want to revamp that relationship and yeah. look at it differently. Oh my gosh. Absolutely. Yeah. We should probably touch on sales for at least a minute while we're here, right? <laughs> You know, I'm just so So, <laughs> so uh, it's, it's so funny. I just got off a call um, with a woman who exemplifies this. So I'll just share a quick example. Um, beautiful, beautiful woman just recently launched her own business coming from a very traditional sales role where what she was taught is what I was taught, which is what many of us are taught, which is like to sell, you have to hard close. Um, you have to push people into things. If you want to make more money, you just make more calls. You just like pound, pound the phones or the DMS or whatever your methodology is very, very masculine way of approaching sales. And can we achieve our goals that way? Yes. Um, it's more of like, you would call like the matter on matter type of approach of like, let me just hustle. Let me just grind. And for those of us who are women, um, or who identify as women, we will find ourselves exhausted, burnt out, depleted, um, just not even inspired or energized, not just about the goal, but about life anymore. If we try to approach our goals in that way. And that was, I approach sales for that way for so long. I approach business that way for so long because that was all I had been taught. And it left me exactly what I said, exhausted, burnt out, eating disorder, not making the money I wanted to make all of the things. <clears throat> When I started deciding to shift it and I started working with some really incredible female, like feminine mentors who modeled a very different way of selling that had the masculine structure and support to it, but also was really about receiving about self-worth because your level of income will never exceed your level of self-worth. Um, that was about being in flow. That was about self-care so that you can actually give to your clients. So you can show up in your business, everything shifted for me. And I started making way more, working way less, um, and having a radically different experience of sales. Cause it wasn't this like do or die death grip, like, ah, oh, I have to make the sale <laughs> or else it was like, no, let me actually sit back and I, like, see, do I want to work with this person? And I, I was more comfortable receiving. I was more comfortable, um, being visible, more comfortable speaking my truth. And so, the all of that to say when I was just speaking with this client before and talking with her about what was going to unlock her next level, it was like, it's not going to be more of the grind, hustle, push force if you want to do it in any way that's sustainable. There's a different way to sell. There's a different way to run your business that for us as women is more aligned, which includes some of the masculine energy structure and support and is I think laid on the foundation of this concept of selling from wholeness, which is like, we do the work to feel so good in ourselves, to feel so whole, to feel worthy, to feel abundant, to do those inner, to make the inner shifts that are needed so that we can receive what we're actually looking for in the first Mm -hmm. place. And so that is, it's part of what inspired she sells. It's what I aimed at. I always say like, it's kind of a combination of if Grant Cardone and Abraham Hicks had a love child. That's the best way I can explain what I do. <laughs> and so, uh, so that is, that is she sells in a nutshell with a dose of feminine energy on top. <laughs> oh my gosh. There's so much here. I, you know, and I think to be honest, this mirrors, I think, a um, 
a greater asking and desire that's happening in our planet, which is to integrate mm-hmm. more of the divine feminine energy. And I, something you said, I was like, oh, that there is a, there are a lot of nuggets. But this, you said, you know, the level of your income will never go beyond your level of self worth. Mm-hmm. You said it better, but it was something like that. Um, that you know, your our self worth, our being able to receive, and truly not just saying that, but getting who you are, being able to receive is everything. And that pushing that, that overt masculine energy when it's only that is going to leave you exhausted and burned out. I, I, I know this firsthand. I had to do a total pivot recently myself. I was like, I don't know the, the, the people that are, that are spouting to do it this way, the way I'm made up does not work for me. It does not work for me. And I think what you're also, what's so beautiful about what you're doing, what you're up to, how you're supporting others is you're really, it's like you are helping more women and more souls that really want to make an impact lean into this other aspect of this feminine approach that is frankly healing, healthy, mm-hmm. and whole, as you said, it's, it's, a, it's a step into wholeness, which yeah. I don't know who doesn't want that. That's yeah. And, and thank you for all of that. Um, and I think that like when we can remember and realize like that is actually what you're going for, that's actually at the end of the day, the thing that your soul is seeking is this feeling of wholeness and completion and love. Um, and when we can actually kind of shortcut the process, because when we stop saying, I'll feel that when we say, no, I can actually feel that now by doing the work you'll get all the things you're looking for and more, and it'll be better than you can imagine. And that process of coming back into wholeness and self-love is so beautiful and so powerful. I think it's what our souls are craving. Um, And everything else in sales, career, and life just gets a lot easier when we come at it from that, that angle. Mm. Amen, sister. I, I, I am with you. This has just been such a beautiful, like soul nurturing conversation. I (laughs) literally, I always check in with my energy. I'm like, dang, I feel even more connected to you. Mm. And also just this, this wisdom for, for everyone who's listening. And hopefully if you're taking something from here, really like share with Elise, share with me, share with others, like really put this into action. I, I I believe it's everything is connecting to our wholeness, to our divinity. And you are so living this. And it's really, I love, it's just, it's, it's very um, empowering to hear then there, you know, the results as well, but the reminder, it's what you're seeking is that feeling of wholeness and mm. no thing is going to give that to you until you find that within. That's what I'm hearing yeah. you say. That's 100% it. You nailed it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I will just ask because I always, at the end of all of my, most of my interviews, when I remember, I always say if there's a, I call them heart flares, Elise, where your heart is like, whoop, flare, I got something to say, I got something to, we didn't, maybe I didn't, I didn't ask you if there's a quote or there's an idea or there just an intuition, intuitive messages or anything else before we close that you're just feeling called to share. Mm. I mean, gosh, I've said it before, but it's, it's the thing that just shows up again that I want to reiterate is like, truly trust yourself. Like, what would you do right now if you 100% trusted yourself? Mm -hmm. What action would you take if you 100% trusted yourself? And that will always lead you in the right direction. No matter what you're up against, that is the answer. Absolutely stunning. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I want to just say, and so it is. Yeah. Uh Aho. Truth. Mm. It's truth. Amazing. Thank you you for shining your light, you know, for, for being so courageous because that, that, that wild, what felt like a wild investment in you and your, you know, your gifts and, and really putting yourself in that kind of space to just make a decision to change. I mean, that's now paying dividends in ways Mm -hmm. of the way you're able to be the message and share this with, with me, with so many others and just really honor you and appreciate you, Elise. It's just um, beautiful to hear your Mm -hmm. story and, and how you're, you're being of even greater service now. Thank you. 
Thank you so much. This was beautiful. This was so fun. This was incredible. Thank you for making the space uh, for us to talk about this. Love you so much. Oh, love you. And I'll just say a quick big shout out and love to you, my beloved listener. Thank you for being with us today. Seriously, my friend, I really, really hope you take so many of these beautiful insights and just really like let them marinate, digest, reflect, sit with them, right? Because everything you need is within you. You just heard it's from a beautiful soul who is living and breathing this understanding of we're all worthy, that you're worthy right now as you are and to love yourself and trust yourself. That's one of the things I love that so many of the things Lee said. And so I hope that you remember to really, really tune into you and to honor your USGU. And I want to say thank you. It's, a, it's an honor to be part of your journey. And from both of us, love and light, blessings, and until next time. Ah.